Continuing our conversation about the book of Revelation, we get into some discussion about heaven and earth. I gather from this conversation that what she was trying to present is the Watchtower's very Gnostic understanding of flesh, bad, versus spirit, good. Their teachings give the impression that spirit equals something like a vapor or somehow less real thing than the physical. That is a very limited and twisted kind of perspective. It is we, as finite, physical, fallen creatures who cannot grasp the fullness of the spiritual. But that should not lead us to underestimate the reality or depth of what it is. The idea that heaven and earth cannot be united in eternity is contrary to what the Bible teaches. But Jehovah's Witnesses hold on to that separation because their so-called hope is in a physical earth where things are nicer and you can play with animals and live in a nice house with the people you love and that sort of thing. There is no understanding of or focus on the true paradise which is reconciliation with the creator of the universe and spending eternity in his presence praising and worshiping him. I've noticed that the Watchtower teaches them to take certain words in the Bible, such as world or earth, and create a broad brush meaning as long as it fits whatever their argument is. While the word may have different meanings within the specific context of each reference, they point out one correct use and then paint it over any other use of the word, even if it doesn't fit in another context. This is not an honest handling of the text. It's actually very poor argumentation that simply cannot hold up under any contextual examination. Another interesting thing to note is that the Watchtower teaches in the thousand years, there will still be some sin and death on earth, though just less than before because Satan is bound. That kind of contradicts some of the things she says here. Okay, there won't be any death, so... so... it has to be on the earth, because don't you agree that there was never, ever any death in heaven? I would agree there's no death in heaven, absolutely. Yeah, but so when we're talking about... Revelation 21, 4 says, is repeating those tears, wiping the tears from their eyes, but it clarifies it because it says, and death will be no more. So right. that has to be on earth. It can't be in heaven. If you read the passage itself, there is no distinction being made between heaven and earth. That's not even in view here. The passage simply is talking about what eternity will be for those who are in Christ. It's not giving secret instruction about how to split up references to heaven and to earth. She's seeing it there only because she completely buys into the two-class system that Joseph Rutherford came up with in 1935. Note also that Even in that same passage, it talks about God being with his people. I should have gotten into that in more detail right then with her, because right before that verse, it says, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. She may have said that then it's just talking about the 144,000 in heaven, not the so-called great crowd on earth. But that wouldn't work for her either because she was using that specific passage to defend her claim that it's about people on earth and not in heaven. Unfortunately, I don't think we had our Bibles open to that passage specifically, and she was just making general reference to it. So it was a missed opportunity on my part. This is why it's so important to open up the Bible and really examine not just the verses that they throw out there, but also the direct context of each passage. Right. Of course, it can't be in heaven, but it also, it can't be on earth. Well, then there was one, that great crowd then, which is, we're talking about in verse 16, that says that their tears will be wiped. They have to be on earth, because verse 21 of of, uh, of chapter 21 and verse 3 or 4 it says that their tears will be wiped and there will be no more death. So you think they're talking about two different times then, two different things? They're talking about the same thing. Okay. So then wouldn't that mean that Paradise Earth has no more death? That's right. Okay. So then would that not... Uh, uh, it just seems to me that, that that heaven and earth are then united when the veil was torn. Then it's all the How same thing. How can heaven and earth be reunited? Because there's spirit creatures in heaven and and there's physical creatures on earth. But, but we're both, and Christ is both. They're uh, they can't they can't 
be the same. We've been perfected and glorified. Of course, we can be in the presence of God. We are. We will be in the presence of God. We're at the footstool. The earth is the footstool. Well, the earth is the, the footstool right now. Isaiah says the earth is the footstool. Psalm right. says the earth. Is the right, and the earth is the footstool of God right now. Absolutely, He already is, always has been. So that doesn't really define what we're talking about with the new heavens and the new earth. Well, do you do you think that the when it refers in uh, in in in, P, in Peter is it Second Peter about a new heavens and a new earth that that's going to be a new physical earth and the new physical heavens? Um. But yes. Of, uh, well, yes, but I think do, it's more than that. that there's a spiritual element to that that I don't think we can fully grasp. Yes, will the new earth be a new earth, a real earth? Absolutely. Um, but we don't look at heaven as even being physical in the sense that we understand. We don't totally understand what the spiritual realm is. It's much more, I would say, much more solid and much more, it's much more than what we, we have. have we, we can understand it from what the Bible tells us. Right, about right. But, but there's a lot. Of, of right, but we don't, we don't live with our eyes completely we, unveiled. We know, to, we know that the earth is going to not ever change because the Bible says the earth abides forever. Oh, the earth will be recreated, though. Like, it's going to be... Well, the earth, be, it's going to be burned and then and then re. Well, the, when the earth, when the Bible speaks of the earth, it speaks of it in, as people because in in a lot of cases because if you read in uh, in Genesis at the time that um, of Nimrod, it it says that the whole earth spoke one language. Well, the earth doesn't talk; it's the people. Oh, I, that you're talk absolutely the earth. right. I agree, and that's the whole point. God created the earth for the people to dwell on. Absolutely. So the earth, in the in, in the biblical sense, a lot of times can re, can mean can refer to people. Sure, it can. Yeah, yeah. that is one definitely one. Po- and even sometimes when it talks about the whole earth, it's actually talking about a people. So they, when it talks about the earth being destroyed, it's not talking about destroying the earth because um, if we read. Um, just let me find it here for a moment. I just can't remember where that scripture is. It says about uh, the, this destroying of the ungodly man. In so do you, what do you know what book you were thinking of? Yeah, in my mind. I'm just gonna put my phone down just for a sure. moment. Yeah. Hang on, a moment. can you hang on? Yeah. Thanks. And there's an interesting scripture in First John, um, chapter two and seventeen. Uh, the world is passing away, and also its lusts, but the one who does the will of God lives forever. Mm-hmm. So, my it's further, furthermore, the world is passing away, and so is its desire. Mm-hmm. But the one who does the will of God remains forever. So there the world is called, is passing away. Yeah. Which means if you believe that the world is, that the world means the earth, then what is the desire that this is, is does the world, does the earth soil have a desire? You know what, let me, um, I think we're, we're on the same page here. Um, I have some little notes here. In my Bible, let me read it. I think you're going to really appreciate this. When it talks about the world, it says, This is not a reference to the physical material world, but the invisible spiritual system of evil dominated by Satan. Yeah, so So, it's referring to people, right? So we're we're in agreement there. So that's fine. Pardon? Yeah, so we're in agreement there. That's fine. Mm Mm-hmm. So that the, what's passing away is not the physical earth. Okay, so okay, evil. Okay. okay, so when you're looking at the judgments in Revelation coming down on the earth, you would say those are all coming on the people and not on the physical earth. So what? Like, like the, when you look at the trumpets and the seals and, you know, all the, the judgments mentioned in Revelation, mm-hmm. that you would say then that those are not at all on the physical earth. They're just on the people. Yeah. Okay, okay, that helps me understand where you come from. Okay. So, does that sound sensible? 
Uh, yeah, and I partially agree with it. I, I think there's, I mean, we look at the world around us now, and I actually believe we're in the end times now and have been since since Christ came, um, that we are actually seeing evidence of of sin and death as judgment on the earth now, and it's happening to the earth when you see floods and earthquakes and, and you know, all of the, the damage that's physically happening to the earth. That's an aspect of it. It's less important than the aspect of what's happening to human beings, but it's all it's all part of it. So when we see famine, when we see you know the crops all dying, and we see you know whole cities being yeah, flooded, and, and the the earthquakes happening and the yeah. the things happening like that, yeah. it's just a further proof of of God what God had said when Adam and Eve sinned that yes. He was withdrawing His 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 spirit from them. Yeah, so yeah. they started to de- deteriorate, and he wasn't. So he was letting the Satan, yeah, starting uh-huh. letting control because the Adam and Eve wanted Adam. They wanted Adam and Eve wanted to worship Satan. Well, no. So Adam said. So Jehovah said, "Okay, this is your time." Do you? you think that, let, see, let's go back there a second. You see what. Uh, what uh, <laughs> what you bought on yourself? It's so, like a parent, you know. Oh, okay. Let Let's look at the whole Satan thing, though. Like, you think they wanted to worship Satan? Is that what you're thinking? They didn't. They didn't know that they would be worshiping, but by being disobedient, that's what they ended up doing. Yes. Yeah. You don't think that the sin is actually the pride that they wanted to be like God, and that was the ultimate. That was the sin. That was the fall. Disobedience was the fall. Disobedience. You don't think they it was were the, to they were to worship and to, to obey, worship and obey as connected. I should have focused on how they view Jesus here, and I wanted to try and get to that point. She said they were worshiping Satan by simply listening to him and doing as he wanted, but loving, obeying, bending the knee to, proclaiming the name of Jesus is not worship. This is a clear double standard that showcases the inconsistent way that they have changed the word worship to obeisance only when it refers to Jesus, even though it's the same Greek word as is used for worship of the Father. So it's a, just and a, if you if so it's you purely disobey external. somebody and obey somebody else, then you're following their direction. Right. You're you're okay. worshiping them in a, in a sense, oh. and you're going their direction. That's interesting. Okay. Um, so you don't think the sin started with their heart? It started with what the, the physical act, and that's it. Yeah, they it started. Sure, it started with their heart. They okay. they started thinking that they didn't that they wanted to be like God. They right. they believed that lie. Right. So then, pride was really the first sin, right? Not the taking of the disobedience. Fruit. Right, but the pride led to the disobedience. Right, it was part of it. Yeah. So pride. Then, uh, uh, any, uh, anything that's connected with disobedience, yes. Sure, so that's the, so that's the heart issue, right? Like when we look at, um, you know, like when Christ was talking about, um, you know, commandments, like, I, you know, it is, it's written, do not commit adultery. And I say, when you lust after a woman, you have already committed adultery in your heart. Mm-hmm. That's sort of the point. He's like, just he's not changing the law. He's saying, I'm driving home here. The actual sin is your heart issue, right? The, the sin that happens externally is sin too, but there's an internal sin. It has the heart, yeah. Yeah, so the internal sin is what and he's the heart feeling. is the motivating factor. Right, yes, and that's that's who we are. So mm-hmm. um, our actions are important and they flow out from but we don't we, we don't do anything till we think about it. And when we right. when when we're convinced, well then our heart tells us and then it gives to birth. do it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you know. Okay. Okay. Gonna go on a trip. Yeah, you you convince yourself. You're you're motivated. Your heart. Your your whole body. Your heart is your is considered your motivating point of your action. Sure. Yeah. And the actions give birth Uh from what is in the heart. So. So. um, Okay. I'm I'm glad we agree on that. So. So really, then, when we're looking at sin and you know, sin is rebellion against God, right? Every time it is contrary to God. And so there, there's, there's, two, there's two thoughts that I just wanted to point out in that, because we agreed on the one in, in verse 17 of our first John there. So there's two, there's two things that we take away from there. 
is that the, the world that is spoken of there is people. And then the earth is not going to be destroyed because it says the one who does the will of God remains forever. Remains forever. Well, that so, means he's going to stay on the earth. Okay. And he's but, not going to get burned up. But Christ Christ remains forever, right? No, if you're talking, they're, they're I know. Just talking about... I'm just doing a comparison here. Individuals. Right. So can he not resurrect? If they're dead, they'll be resurrected. But right. They'll be, so they'll can, be people who uh, survive Armageddon and uh, will remain. So... But even if you are resurrected, you're going to remain on the earth. You're not going to be remaining anywhere else. You were on the earth, so you're going to remain on the earth, even though you're resurrected. Yeah, okay, that, uh, yeah, I understand that's your teaching. Yeah, okay. Right. Um, so, okay, <laughs> so many places we could go with this. <laughs> um, but I think what I will do is maybe say that's a, a good place to maybe stop and move things forward uh, another conversation in the future mm -hmm. okay if you've been listening to much of this series you can probably guess by now that we didn't actually say our goodbyes quite yet but carried on for some time longer we had already been talking for a very long time at that point so that's why i wanted to wrap things up the subject matter continued to evolve as the hours went by, and I suspect she would have been happy to keep on going for several more hours yet to get that in on her time card. So, in the next video, we'll pick up at this point where she asks if we can do a bit of a summary with each other regarding the areas where we agree and disagree. Here's a little teaser. She thinks that over the course of this phone call, she has convinced me that Jesus is a created God. <laughs>